All right, what is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and today I am back with another game review here on the Flyers second preseason game. Uh, you have Group B, uh, mainly from training camp, Team Black for the scrimmage, getting the uh, majority of the play here. That was a roster for tonight's game. Just to start off, before I get into the lines, before I get into the game preview, uh, the Flyers lost the game 4-2. to They also lost the shootout that they did after the fact um, that teams have been doing for the preseason. Uh, just to kind of get into the rhythm of the shootout and stuff, um, they ended up losing that as well. Uh, but to start off, before I, as I said, get into any of the game stuff, a couple injury updates. Um, as we saw in camp, Tanner Lagzinski, Linus Hogberg, those guys were out. Left camp early. So, as for Lexinski, he is essentially pretty much out for the season uh, with surgery on his left hip. Um, he's had surgery on his right hip before, uh, so now he has to get the other hip checked out. So, that obviously not the best news. He's a guy who could have cracked an NHL roster spot this year. Uh, so, it, it, it sucks for Lexinski. He's a guy who just really can't catch a break. Same thing with Wade Allison. Uh, Linus Hogberg out 7 to 10 days with an oblique strain. Uh, if you don't, don't know what that is, it's around a... It is a strain uh, around the stomach area, um, and also Igor Zamula is out three to four weeks. He had a one and a half out of two grade um, groin sprain. Uh, the Phantoms don't start until October 23rd, um, so he may not miss too much time. Uh, that might get him up to right about when the season starts, but um, yeah, not the uh, best news there for Igor. Um, played on Tuesday's game, scored the opening goal for the Flyers, so uh, that wasn't the best news, but uh, as for a little bit of an update on Wade Allison as well, the Flyers are looking into surgery with him. Uh, still don't know yet, but we're going to have to wait and see what happens there. So, so if it's surgery, probably looking at, I'd say, maybe, what, like December, maybe Christmas time for him to maybe come back around that, maybe maybe early January, um, early to mid-January, something like that. So, again, it's just really not the best news right now. Um, but anyway, get into the game. As I said, Group B, mainly for these lines. Uh, so the Flyers basically keep their NHL lines together. Uh, you had JVR, Frost, Farabee, Thompson, Lawton, Albee, Coupel, uh, Dino Ye, Kate, Sandin, and then Mayhew, O'Reilly, and Forster. Uh, Sandheim and Ristolainen, York, Glendening, Millman, and Wiley. Um, and then Jones would end up be playing uh, half this game. Sandstrom would play uh, the other half as well. So Sandstrom came in around at the 10-minute mark of the second. Um, for Martin Jones, let's just say this was not the best showing for him. Um, he didn't face a single shot in the second period that the Bruins had. I think the first shot they had on net was for, was against Sandstrom. Um, and he gave up three goals in the first. Now, the Flyers took a lot of penalties. I, I'm just going to break this down very easily. The Flyers scored the opening goal. Power play goal from Farabee. Really nice, good puck movement. It was a goal scorer's goal. Farabee moved right to the front of the net and scored. Um, really nice play. Good to see Farabee. He ended up getting two goals, and I had another power play goal later in the third. Um, Flyers had a power play. Wrist line in just went over way too much. It just lost coverage. Lost his man in the middle. Uh, Hall had an unbelievable pass. Uh, diving play with the stick. Sent it over. Marshan shoots and scores. Not much Jones can do there. The second one, Smith, they kind of get in. It was a really good entry um, from the Bruins. Hall had a nice play, and they get in. Smith scores on a slam dunk. Not really his fault either. The defenseman also got caught as well, which was Wiley. Um, and then the third goal, it's like, it was just like a, a broken play. It, it wasn't anything really crazy. And Carlo just shoots it, and you're like, and I, like, you know, when I watch the game, I'm like, all right. I'm not worried about this. You know what I mean? Like, you ever watch a game and you're like, uh-oh, like, this play is developing. Like, this might not be good. Well, as Carl is shooting, I'm like, all right, it should be an easy save. Glove it, throw it out, and Flyers go up the ice or something. Well, and then it goes in. I'm like, oh, my God. So that was not one that obviously, you know, obviously Jones would want that one back. I think every goalie wants a, you know, obviously wants the goal back that they give up. But not the best first period from the Flyers overall. Shots on goal were 11-4 in favor of the Bruins. Second period, though, the Flyers were all over it for majority of this period. Um... They had a lot of good plays where they're cycling the puck well, getting score chances. The Bruins, it seemed like, were just throwing pucks in random areas. And they would kind of just flub at it. Flyers would pick it back up, dump it in, cycle some more. Bruins would kind of be able to escape all that, do the same thing, and it would all just kind of go back and forth. Um, and then the Flyers get a power play. And this was weird. Frost was in the slot. Forster's on the right side. Again, I just don't understand this, man. We saw this a little bit. Uh, where they had Jerome Gutierrez switched up. I guess they did it with this unit too. And I, I, I just don't get it. You have Frost with such great hands and you put him in the slot, which I don't mind. It's not horrible, but would I prefer it? No, I'd rather have Farabee there, if I'm being honest with you. Not along the half wall. Um, 
and he was on the left side at this time. They had a bunch of stuff, uh, you know, switched around. Um, Forrester on the right side, I don't really think that gives Forrester enough of any chance to shoot the puck. If it doesn't give Giroux, I don't really think it would help Forrester at all. Um, it, it's just weird. It's a very, very weird setup. Um, do you have your in front of the net? is fine. Your quarterback is fine. You know, there's really nothing there. I just don't really like Frost in the slot. Um, I don't really think it does much for him. I think he's such a guy. If you if he has great hands, you put him on the half wall. I think that's one thing, too. Um, and then the Boston ended up getting a power play. Thompson had a really good play where he killed off about 25 seconds of a pretty strong, strong shift. Um, that that previous Flyers power play only had one really crazy chance, but that was it. Um, and then TNT just had some crazy camera problems throughout the entire period. Uh, and then at one point, the last like handful, couple minutes there, like six, five, six minutes of the second, was like the Rangers rookie game point of view camera from like the second row. That's what it seemed like. There was just a lot of problems. Again, it was the first game and stuff, so I'm not going to harp into it too much. But I thought overall, I thought the the game calling was good. I, I wasn't worried about that. It was just things like that with TNT, the camera, and all that stuff. So that wasn't the best. Um, the Bruins had ended up adding another one, 4-1. DeBrus scores, slammed at home. Uh, Boston got their mojo back from there. They ended up getting another power play late there that went over. Um... Shots on goal were 18-11 uh, in favor of Boston, 7-7 seven, seven in the period. So I thought the Flyers had a pretty solid period. Um, you know, if there was one guy that I wanted to see more from tonight, it was Morgan Frost. I don't necessarily don't necessarily think Frost was really that involved, if I'm being honest with you. Um, he just, you know, had a, a better third period. He looked pretty good on the power play. Um, so did Cam York uh, on the power play goal that the Flyers scored there uh, pretty early in the period to make it 4-2. to two. Um, York had a really nice play to keep the puck in for Frost, excuse me, not Forrester, Frost had a couple nice plays where he, you know, set up some passes and things like that, but, you know, they've said he's looked bigger, and, you know, I, I get that, I, I, I've seen that he's looked bigger, I, 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 I can physically see that, but, like, I don't necessarily think he's at the point where he's playing better, and I want to see more for him, that, that spot, that second line spot is not his right now, like, he needs to earn that. And seriously, I really don't think I saw too much from him tonight. Um, again, it is the first game. It's the first game for Group B, so I don't want to you know, be too harsh or anything like that. But I really would like to see some more from him. Um, but, you know, overall, I think it's going to take some time and obviously the injury and everything. So we'll see what happens. But um, they've said he's gained weight and he's he's gotten bigger, which is fine. I, I, I see that. But I'd like for him to show that, too. So... We'll see what happens there, and, uh, you know, really the period would end. There wasn't too much to say. Um, third period was pretty much back and forth. Um, as for Jones, obviously it wasn't the best outing, as I said. I thought Sealer had another pretty good game. Um, he had some pretty good plays, good acts of sticks. He did take two penalties, though, which obviously isn't the best thing. But overall, I mean, I thought the guys from Group B that you'd expect to play were, were pretty good. I think this next game on Saturday is going to be really a, a, a kind of a jumble of these lines. Flyers do have practice tomorrow at 1230, so I'm curious to see what these lines are going to look like and who's going to be at practice tomorrow because who's really going to play? I mean, I, I'm not too sure. I mean, maybe that's because practice is, since practice is at 1230, maybe it's a little bit later because these guys obviously are going to be flying in from Boston and stuff, so who knows? We'll see what happens there. But as for the shootout, um, Frost, Faraby, and Lawton, and Forrest are all one for the Flyers. They all missed. Hall, Stanika, and Halla, uh, they all missed for Boston. And then DeBrus scored high glove to win it there. Um, we're honestly, overall, it, you know, tonight was a good night. Um, was able to watch some Flyers hockey. Uh, again, obviously, I would have liked to see a better outcome, but it is what it is. I thought some, you know, most of the guys that you'd expect from Group B, as you said, to play well, I thought did play well. Um, I think some of these guys are definitely going to want to have another showing at some point, too. But um, obviously, Farabee had an unbelievable game, two goals. Um, he, he, he can shoot the puck. That's that's one thing with Joel. I think he's really going to turn into a superstar in this league. So uh, hopefully, Joel can kind of keep that up. And um, definitely a good start for him in his first game back, too. So overall, Flyers fans, let me know your guys' thoughts below. Remember, guys, podcast articles, those links are on my channel. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys in the next one, and goodbye.